ticket. You have to show the game when you leave, okay? When you get out, you have to pass your ticket. Residences were on rivers. Here's the River Thames coming up after 200 yards. Because in the past, if you think about it, the quickest, safest way to travel was by water. The countryside was bandit infested. Here's the river now. Um, the roads were full of holes and muddy. It was quicker, safer to travel by boat. So Windsor is on for museums. It's called South Kensington. Four big museums will appear on the left, or two of them will appear properly. We'll let the tension build. The building on the left, I don't know why my voice is going high, is... <laughs> been away, You're getting excited. <laughs> um, the building on the left, Brick Modern Street Museum. It's a glorious building. Let's get ready. You just see trees first. Um, this is also the French bit of London. You'll see a lot of French flags further down on the right. Um, but just look at the animal carvings up near the windows, near the roof. The Natural History Museum. They say they've got the best dinosaur display in 63 million years. Only time never, never to go there, school holidays. The dinosaur rooms are festooned with feral children. It's <laughs> awful. But that's the Natural History Museum on the left, and here are the feral children. <laughs> oh, <come on. laughs> um, obviously Dutch, they should be looking happier. But um, feed them to feed them to their dinosaur shrinks. <laughs> Behind the Natural History Museum is the Science Museum and the Gloria and Albert Museum. That will appear after the road on the left. Again, through trees, it's brown brick and stone. The Victoria and Albert is the decorative arts. Frank cleans everything, music, fashion, woodwork, ceramics, furniture. A true, true, true treasure house. All these museums are free. Free. London is expensive. There's a lot of free things as well. One, two, three. Um, but the underground here, this is not the, this is the other side of the park from you, if that means anything. So museums, the British Museum is elsewhere, further east. Now, traffic lights hold us briefly. Big church coming up on the left. It's not famous, but it's a very fashionable Roman Catholic church, the Brompton Oratory, late Victorian. If you wanted high mass, all the smelled. The locals know it as Horrids. The rest of the world as Harrods. You might have heard of Harrods Knightsbridge. It's a few blocks ahead of us. It's ahead on the right. It's a huge brown building with a dome. Um, you may be looking at it as I'm speaking. We'll get a good view when we pass it. So shopping starts here behind the shopping left or right. As I said, expensive, expensive residential. Um, Harrods is an institution. It was the first building in Britain to put a uh, moving staircase escalator in. And when they first put it in in the 1890s, there was a man at the top with a tray giving people free brandies because it was such an awesome, frightening experience oh to go gosh. on this moving staircase that Harrods gave everyone a brandy at the top. <laughs> they also, anyway, Harrods, it's an institution. The food halls are great. There's things you've never thought of eating in there. Harrods Knightsbridge on the right. It's owned by the Qatari and Arab royal family. It used to be owned by uh, Mr. al Fayed, an Egyptian. You see the red round underground sign at the end on the right. Um, Knightsbridge Underground. Wow, this is as quiet as you'll ever see Knightsbridge traffic-wise. Um, it makes up for what we had earlier. This is where you normally expect the mess. Now then, the good and the beautiful, not that I know, um, apparently always shun the rich people in this area, shun Harrods, Horrods. Um, they apparently do their shopping at Harvey Nichols, which is, will appear on the right in a moment, Harvey Nicks as they call it. It'll be another huge big store, you might see a head on the right, the name on the corner, 
big brown brick building again, Harvey Nichols. I've only ever been in once, I found it horribly flashy and vulgar. Harrods is much nicer. That's on the right. So Knightsbridge is the area, residential or shopping. It's, you know, top of the pile. It's expensive, let's just leave it at that. The French Embassy will come up on the left. You might see their flag, one of these cream buildings, looking at the Q80 Embassy. I'll go over the top and then straight Piccadilly. Um, in a moment, we're coming up to what is usually considered the busiest roundabout in London, Hyde Park Corner. There's a little bit used to come to a station called Waterloo, which we'll see at some point. Not any longer. We used to love the piquancy of the arch to Wellington with a threatening sky behind it, ahead on the right. The Duke of Wellington's former home, the Heights were homes one more time will appear on the left after a hundred yards, a big yellow property with a flag flying above it, which is a museum today. Again, it's one of those museums no one ever goes to really. You know, it's the sort of place you go to if you'd been to. The one behind it is one of the sort of ordinary ones, very blocky, just a door at the front. They introduced the new buses last year. I haven't even been on one yet. Um, there's an ordinary one, if you like. We haven't been on double number either. No? We need to go. Um, but the new ones are lovely. They look yeah. rounded like the very old ones. There are a few very old ones around. We might see one later. But finally, finally, you're pushed back up into the upholstery again. The arch to Wellington is on the right. His former home coming up on the left with the green railings. Apsley House. That building on the left used to have the wonderful address, number one London. <laughs> it was the first substantial property you heard the joints. They've got balloons outside the Hard Rock Cafe. It's probably coming up on the left. It's probably something to do with the World Cup. It is, it'll be the England. Red, white and blue. That must be on the left for the World Cup. They've got a shop as well as the eatery. This road is Piccadilly. On the right is a park. It's called Green Park because that's what it is most of the year. Very little colour. I will go down to St. James and Street. Um, yes, just greenery, just greenery, except daffodils in the springtime. Then there's a lot of artwork will come up on the right, I say off as well. Um, you know, some of it's not too bad, copies of Jen older stuff, but I think you're safe for buying t-shirts and some of the stuff there. <laughs> anyway, art is a very personal thing. <laughs> now then, a very famous hotel will come up on the right. The first building on the right is the Ritz Hotel. There is a Ritz in Paris as well. Um, but Cesar Ritz, just over a hundred years ago, the son of a Swiss shepherd, he wanted to build the most fashionable hotel in the world, on the most fashionable street in the world. Then it probably was Piccadilly. Ritz Hotel, here's a new bus again, coming up on the right. Lovely rounded um, profile. We're going to come off this big road in a moment. The area on the left, for the record, just for the record, is Mayfair, which is synonymous with the good life. Brand names, things like that. But we're going to come off Piccadilly. If we went straight ahead, it would be Piccadilly Circus. You've been in some of those areas, I believe. Um, Piccadilly Circus is the, the Times Square of London, I think is the best way to describe it. It's a nighttime area. I always think Piccadilly in daylight is a little bit seedy and hungover, <laughs> shabby. After dark, when the crowds are out and the drink is flowing, it changes. We've mentioned Mrs Thatcher a couple of times today, I'm trying to think how. She died in the Ritz Hotel the last year or so of her life. She and her supporters have paid her sweet for her delivery. And you would have seen her out in Green Park quite a lot, just sitting there. Oh, yeah, I have. There's a play in the West End, mm. um, <laughs> followed by three new ones. It's all changing. The, the new ones are trying to roughly model from the rounded corners of the old one. I think they're lovely. I'm dying to go on one like a tourist. I haven't been on one yet. Here's another. In fact, they're not really a rarity. I shouldn't be hmm. sounding so excited. <laughs> Sorry about that, everyone. <laughs> God, our guide only talked about his new buses. <laughs> Sorry. Youthful enthusiasm. Right, at the end of this road, uh, mind me today, those blue pills again. 
Um, there's a dark brown brick building. As I'm speaking, it's got a red sightseeing bus outside. It's straight ahead at the moment. It's St. James's Palace. It's the centre of the British court. When ambassadors present their credentials, they do it here. I'll show you the most famous shoe shop in London. Look to the left, L-O-B-B, the shoes. The most famous hat shop on the left, L-O-C-K, Lock. The most famous wine merchant, Berry, black on the left. Best gentleman shops are all in this area. Shirts, accessories. But here, look to the right, above the sightseeing bus, is St. James's Palace. Built by Henry VIII, that's in the 1500s. It's the centre of the British court. Everyone knows the other palaces. There's no entrance in there at all. You can walk around it. The Queen's Parade would have been down there. It's all sealed off um, this morning. I bet she's got her feet up now with the TV on. <laughs> Philip, what's the first World Cup game? Um, <laughs> before she buckles down tomorrow. This road is called Pall Mall. Most, a lot of the buildings, some of the ones with flags on the right, are gentlemen's clubs. I don't mean pole dancing, things like that. Um, tradition. Yeah, look at the hat on the top hat on the right. That's a rare sight these days. Probably some function connected with this morning. These are the top gentlemen's clubs on the right. You won't see any names. As I said, not in a seedy way. Um, no ladies can be become members these days. You're invited to be a member. You, you don't apply directly. These are all gentlemen's clubs on the right. These austere buildings. And if you keep looking to the right, a big column will appear. On the top is a man called the Duke of York, he's not famous, except for a nursery rhyme, the grand old Duke of York who had 10,000 men, he marched them up to the top of the hill and he marched them down again. That's his 10 seconds of fame.